Right, in today's class we're going to discuss two things. We're going to look at the words and ideas of probability and we're also going to understand and use the probability scale. All right, scale we've met before, it's a word we use to measure. So we're going to find out what probability is all about, we're going to use some words to describe it and then we're going to see how we measure it. So the first thing I'm going to ask is how do we measure the chance or the likelihood of something happening? So if I was to say, ask the question, what is the chance of Wayne Rooney scoring this weekend? Okay, and a lot of things will come into my head. But first of all, I would probably think of his latest score record. And here is a headline from this weekend's Mirror, where it says, Wayne Rooney sets the record for the most goals scored at one Premier League club as Manchester United beat Liverpool. So I said to myself, right, okay, he's after beating the record, he's doing really well at Manchester United, so I'd say the chances of him scoring this weekend would be pretty likely. What I'm actually doing there is I am using probability. And probability is when you assess the chances or the likelihood of something happening. So, how do we measure the chance or likelihood of something happening? And we measure using a scale, a probability scale. When we first look at this scale, it goes from impossible the whole way up to certain. So, something is impossible if it will never happen. Something is certain if it is always going to happen. In the middle here, we have an even chance. And that means some things are just as likely to happen as not to happen. It's an even chance, or as you might have heard before, it's what we call a 50-50 chance. In between impossible and even chance, we have unlikely. And this is some things that probably won't happen, but just might. They are what we call unlikely. And any idea what this one here is going to be? Impossible, unlikely, even chance. This one here is called likely, and it means that some things probably will happen, but may not happen, so they are likely. So this is the scale we use to try and determine the probability of something happening. So we're gonna do a few questions ourselves here, and the first one we're gonna look at is, what is the probability you will celebrate your 200th birthday tomorrow? And you can have impossible, you can have certain. Underneath here you could have 50-50. Another word for that is even. You could have unlikely or likely. So, what do you think? What's the chances you will celebrate your 200th birthday tomorrow? Well, actually, the chance of that happening is pretty much impossible. And the reason for that is nobody has ever really lived to be 100. So I'm going to place it here. Okay, example number two. If I was to toss a coin, what's the probability or the chances you would get a heads? Okay, so on a coin, a coin has two sides. And we call the first, the top side, heads. And the bottom side is called tails. And so if I flip it, if I flip it or if I toss it, it means I throw it upside down. Um, where do I expect it to be? What are the chances are of me getting heads? Well, if you look at any coin, a coin has two sides and the chances of getting heads is the same as chances of getting tails. And that's what we refer to as an even chance of either. So locate where even is on your diagram. It's halfway between impossible and certain. So it is located here. And so that's the probability of getting a heads when you toss a coin. This question asks us here, it will rain in Madrid on the 15th of August. Okay, so what do I know? I know Madrid is in Spain. Uh, I'm thinking of all the nice hot beaches that I imagine in Spain, so I'm thinking they get a great summer. August, definitely one of the summer months or early autumn months. So for me, I'm thinking that if I was to book a holiday anywhere, I'd be booking Madrid 
in August with the hope that I would be getting a lot of sunshine. So will it rain in Madrid on the 15th of August? My decision is that it's definitely not impossible, but probably quite unlikely. So I'm going to place my arrow just along here. So probably in between impossible and unlikely, but a little bit closer to unlikely. So that's my decision there. Okay, and the last one we're going to look at today is it will rain in London on the 30th of November. Okay, so I know pretty much London and Ireland have a similar climate. Um, in November, what would the chances of it being raining here in Dublin? Pretty likely, wouldn't it be? Uh, we get a lot of rain here in Ireland, the same in London. And November is one of the winter months. So I'm thinking, right, well, that's winter. So the chances is, yeah, you could definitely get rain. It's not extremely likely, but it's definitely likely. So I would place it along the likely, so around here. Okay, so I've thought about a few things there before deciding on my decision. But yeah, I mean, London has a similar climate to Dublin and pretty much in November we got a lot of rain here. So I would say that that would be the correct answer. We will pause the video now and you can do the learning check number one. Okay, so we're back now to looking at our probability scale. And when we started looking at our probability scale, we used words impossible, evens and certain. But in maths, although our language is very important, we also need to link it with numbers. And so we can now change the probability scale or link it in with numbers. The probability of something happening that is impossible, so the probability of something never happening or being impossible to happen, the best number to represent that is the number zero, as in it will never happen. The chances of it definitely happening, we use the number one. So our probability scale goes from zero to one. So what do you think the chances of it happening if it's even? How do you think we would represent that? Well, it's halfway between impossible and certain, and it's halfway between zero and one. So a way I can write that would be one half. Now we also have two more words to add in, and that is likely. And unlikely. So if I was going to use fractions to describe this one here, this section here for unlikely, it's between zero and a half. So the fraction that would best suit this would be one quarter. And then if I was to discuss likely it's between a half and one and it's in the middle there between a half and one so the fraction we use to describe likely is three quarters Okay, so here's our probability scale written from 0 to 1. And it always goes from 0 to 1. And 0 is the chances of it being impossible. 1 is the chances of it being certain. And then I've used fractions in between to describe the even chance, the unlikely, and the likely. 
But as you know from studying numbers paint a thousand words, we can write them in fractions, but we can also write them in two other ways. And so another way I can write this scale is by using decimals. Okay, so I still have my zero, still have my one, and then I've got my half, and in here would be my decimals. And as we also spoke in the last chapter, we talked about another way. So you've got fractions, decimals. You can also use your probability scale in percentages. So again, from zero to, and this time, 100%. So, we're going to have a look at this question here. In this bag, there are 10 sweets. Ryan takes out one and eats it. What is the probability that it is red? Okay, when we discuss whether we're going to use fractions, decimals, or percentages, my advice would always be, whenever you see the word probability, give your answer in a fraction. Okay, so I've drawn my fraction line here, my division line, and on the bottom, I will always place the total number of outcomes. And on top, I place the probability of the event happening. So I've used the P here as the symbol for probability. So the probability of the event happening. Okay, well, what is the event we're talking about in this case? We're talking about the probability that you would get a red. And on the bottom, again, we place the total number of outcomes. So the total number of outcomes in this instance, there are 10 suites. So there are 10 different outcomes I could get. The probability of getting a red, let's count them together, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is 5 out of 10. Another way we can write that is 1 half. And if we were used to write it in words, we could say it's an even chance. So, if I'm asked to find the probability of something, I must always give my answer in a fraction. On the bottom, I always have the total number of outcomes, and on the top, I have the probability of the event happening. In this question, we're asked, what is the probability that it is red? So, this is my event. So, the probability of it being red is 5 out of 10. And another way we can simplify that is a half. And we can link it to the work that we were doing earlier in class, which is when we spoke about an even chance. You can see here I've just drawn exactly where the probability of red would be on my scale. And I've gone 0 to 1 and it was 5 out of 10 or 0 0.5 or 1 half. Question number two asks me, what is the probability that I select or that Ryan selects a green one from the bag? Again, when I see the word probability, I underline it and I say to myself, my answer should always be a fraction. And I have a formula for this. And it is the probability of the event happening over the total number of outcomes. So the probability of this event happening, what is the event we're looking at? What is the probability that he selects a green suite? So I'm going to draw my line here for division. On the bottom, I will have the total number of outcomes. So again, there's 10 suites, so there's 10 different outcomes I could have. So I'll have 10 on the bottom. And the probability of this event happening, which is the green event, is 1, 2, 3. So it is 3 out of 10. So I can now mark that in on my scale along the bottom here. All right, the final question we're asked here, so question number three, is what is the probability that a yellow suite is selected? So again, probability, I give my answer in a fraction, and I always use my formula. Okay, so the probability of this event happening, in this case the event is Ryan selecting a yellow, all over the total number of outcomes, which hasn't changed. There's 10 suites in the bag, which means there are 10 different outcomes. And the chances of him getting a yellow one is 1, 2, which is 2 out of 10. Okay, and that is the same as in decimals, 0 0.2, or we could write 1 fifth. And that would be located 0 0.2 just here. So I've drawn that in on my scale. So the chances of getting a yellow are much lower than getting a green, and green is much lower than getting a red. So if I was a betting lady and I had to 
really put my money on what I thought would be selected, I'd go with red as it's probably the best chance I have of being correct. This brings us to the end of the video now. You can do learning check number two. And I'll see everybody tomorrow.